Hey folks, let's do a video on this urinary system model. So let's start with our good old kidney right here. We see its hilum. We're looking at the outside, which is the fibrous capsule. We see the adrenal gland or suprarenal gland sitting on top of it. Coming out of the hilum here, we've got the ureter. We'll come back to it in a second. We also see the renal artery branching into some segmental arteries. We see a couple of them right there. Plus, we see the renal vein, and of course, there's that aorta and that inferior vena cava. If we jump over to the kidney on this side, we see the renal cortex on the outside, the renal medulla, which is made up of all these pyramids. The tip of a pyramid is a, min is a renal papilla, and it drips urine into a minor calyx. So into that little cup right there, it's a minor calyx. And then when minor calyx C's unite, we get the major calyx. And then we get the renal pelvis in there, leaves the renal hilum to become the ureter. And what else do we see here? We got renal columns in between our renal pyramids, so renal columns right there. If we follow our ureter down, we come down to our urinary bladder. We do see the rugi in there. We see the two openings for the ure ureters, as well as the opening for the urethra, the internal urethral orifice. The smooth region demarcated by those openings is the trigone. We see the smooth muscle detrusor muscle, as well as the internal urethral sphincter right around the internal urethral orifice. And we do see a prostate gland here, so we have the prostatic urethra we do see a pair of vas deferenses. And there's even a pair of seminal vesicles like hiding under there. All right, so one urinary system model done. Let's swap on over and do a kidney here. Lots of similar stuff. We got the, re the fibrous capsule on the outside. We got the hilum right there. We see the ureter coming out of the hilum. We see the renal vein coming out, renal artery going in. We've got our cortex. There it is, our cortex right there. We've got our pyramids, which collectively make up our medulla. The tip of a pyramid is a papilla draining urine into a minor calyx. When two minor calyces unite, we get a renal pelvis. Sorry, we get a major calyx. Getting ahead of myself right there. When all the minors and majors come together, we get the renal pelvis, which leaves and becomes the ureter at the hilum. We see the renal columns in between the renal pyramids, of course. And we can follow our blood vessels here a little bit more nicely on this model. We got the renal artery becoming the segmental arteries. Segmental arteries split and we get interlobar arteries going up in between the pyramids. Then we get arcuate arteries curving over the bases of the pyramids. And then I see all my interlobular arteries as well. All right, we got that big kidney model basically done. Another version of the same thing right here, but this model has the trio of structures on it. So when we switch from this kidney to this part, we're zooming in the cortex right here. This is the cortex, the do is down here. Here's my fibrous capsule. This is my arcuate artery here, and I see an interlobular artery. I also see all these little red spheres. These are glomeruli, and I see the vessels connecting the interlobular artery to the glomeruli. So all these guys here, these are all afferent arterioles, and I even see some little efferent arterioles leaving as well, as well as this mesh of capillaries, which represents my paratubular capillaries. If I shift over here a little bit, I do see the rest of the structures of my nephron, including my glomerular capsule, the gray guy there. Of course, the glomerulus is within him. And then we got our proximal convoluted tubule. And then we have the loop of our nephron or loop of Henle then the distal convoluted tubule, and then finally the collecting duct. Now, if we switch to this part, we've got, we're zooming in on the glomerulus and glomerular capsule. 
So here are the capillaries of my glomerulus. And on half of them, I see these little light blue cells. Those are my podocytes, and they make up my visceral glomerular capsule. Out here, I've got my simple squamous parietal glomerular capsule. And then exiting my glomerular capsule, I do see a little bit of my proximal convoluted tubule. I also see my afferent arterial, my efferent arterial, and a little smidge of my distal convoluted tubule. And if we keep going, if we keep going, we do a whole nother model here, more of the same structures. I've got my interlobar artery, my arcuate artery, my interlobular artery, afferent arterial going to my glomerulus, efferent arterial coming out. There's my paratubular capillaries. Blood vessels around the nephron loop are the vasa recta. Continuing with the blood vessels, I've got my interlobular vein, my arcuate vein, and my interlobar vein. Remember the interlobar veins go onward to become the, to come together and become the renal vein. And if I reach over and grab this guy, because I kind of forgot about veins on this one, I do see an interlobular vein. I see an arcuate vein. I see an interlobar vein. Interlobar veins are fusing. And once they finally fused, we get the renal vein. All right. Other structures I can see include my parietal glomerular capsule, my proximal convoluted tubule, my nephron loop, my distal convoluted tubule, and my collecting duct. All right, pretty much the same stuff on this more garish model here. I've got my arcuate artery. I've got my interlobular artery. I've got my afferent arterioles. There are my glomerular capsules, and I see my efferent arterioles as well. Coming out of the glomerular capsule, I get this orange proximal convoluted tubule, leading to my orange and, poop and purple, there we go, nephron loop. And I got my distal convoluted tubule and my collecting duct. See some paratubular capillaries up here as well. All right, finally, finally, we've got this model right here. And a couple things on it. We're gonna start on this side just for fun. There are my glomerular capillaries with all these podocytes sitting on them. Podocytes make up the visceral glomerular capsule. Here's my parietal glomerular capsule right here. And here's my proximal convoluted tubule. And I see my A and my E ferrant arterial, as well as a little bit of the distal convoluted tubule. If I rotate this guy, I just got a kidney here. I see my ureter, I see my renal pelvis, and I see minor calyces, as well as a major where the minors come together. And I got my pyramids making up my medulla as well as my cortex, and there's my fibrous capsule right there. If I spin this guy again, I am going to see, going to see my glomeruli. They're all in my glomerular capsules there. There's my interlobular artery, my arcuate artery, my interlobular vein. I mean, my arcuate vein, there we go, and my interlobular vein. I also see my glomerular capsule here, proximal convoluted tubule, little yellow guy right there, nephron loop, distal convoluted tubule, and collecting duct. Same stuff over here, but now notice I can additionally see my paratubular capillaries and my vasa recta. And that, folks, is pretty much it for urinary system models. See ya.